drunk after breaking up with his girlfriend. Shizuma Ikashima woke up after an eventful night beside Minato Maido, remembering absolutely nothing from the previous night. Minato swore to make the straight man fall for him and then dump him afterward. However, he wasn't supposed to fall in love, either. Inebriated from the previous night, Shizuma absent-mindedly called out Yuka to turn off the blaring alarm. However, instead of a woman, an unusual figure, definitely not feminine, reached out to the alarm, turned the alarm off, and snuggled against Shizuma's back, introducing himself to the half-asleep man. Shizuma snaps out of his lethargic state and sees that instead of his now ex-girlfriend, he's in bed with a man he has never met before. We are then brought back to the night before, where Minato was pestered by a drunk Shizuma, feeling down after getting scolded by his brother. Minato couldn't leave Shizuma alone in the bar after Shizuma wailed about his cheating ex-girlfriend, although very unlike him to play around with straight men. Minato brought the grieving man to a hotel, trying to let Shizuma sleep his sorrows away. However, as Minato confirms that Shizuma is already fine after dumping him to the bed, Shizuma shoots the question back at him. Minato playfully answered that his problem of getting his brother stolen away was significantly worse than Shizuma's. Unexpectedly, Shizuma pulled Minato into an embrace, saying that Shizuma could become his brother instead. Minato complained about the unnecessary cuddling. Still, Shizuma notes that he isn't trying to pull away anyway and that it's okay for Minato to be comforted by other people. Perhaps in his drunken stupor and Minato going weak against that statement, their cuddling slowly turned more intimate. In his thoughts, Minato detested being close to other people, yet Shizuma's hands wrapping him in a warm and safe embrace made him realize that he didn't want Shizuma to stop holding him in his hands and that maybe, Shizuma might be the one for him. Until the morning breaks and Shizuma remembered nothing from the night before. After recognizing that his drunkenness must have blacked him out on that night, Minato took off his choker and used it to tie Shizuma's hands. Minato straddled Shizuma and remarked that jerks who get people in the mood only to remember nothing the next day are the worst kinds of jerks. Minato changed because of that night and he will probably remember it for the rest of his life. And he sure isn't going to let a few bottles of alcohol on Shizuma's system overwrite that memory on the straight man. Frankly, I agree. After getting my emotions stirred up and making me fall for him with just a few words, I would also be mad if that person forgot it as if he didn't just change my perspective on life. Minato started to enact his punishment on Shizuma as the complaints of the man beneath were heard by deaf ears. Shizuma then used his legs to grip Minato's body, tightening it until Minato stopped his advances, trying to fix himself up. Shizuma got up from the bed and remarked that if Minato continued to be the way he was now, he would lose even the ones he could have had. Later that day, Minato went into an outburst about Shizuma's parting words while he angrily snapped photos for the people in the nightclub. Mama, the proprietor of the nightclub calmed Minato down, noting that all kinds of people still come into the nightclub despite it being primarily gay and that he shouldn't have gone serious with a straight man. The drag queens, referred to as ladies, in the nightclub then proceeded to tease Minato, noting that someone as hot as Minato could not hope to win over a straight man. Ticked off by the teasing, Minato swore to seduce the jerk, soothe his broken heart then break it right after. The ladies took that bet, and that if Minato wins, they will all shave themselves bald. As if to encourage him to find the man and get his closure, Mama asked Minato to find the target of his ire and return Shizuma's student ID personally. At the university, Shizuma busied himself in the laboratory while lamenting about his hangover and the night he spent with Minato. He didn't even know that he was bi-curious, or that he could sleep with a man after recovering from Yuka, although he admitted that Minato was indeed attractive enough for him. He recalled Minato's words, then realized that no matter how he looked at the situation, he was the one in the wrong. Before he could continue musing, someone called him out, saying that a blonde man who looked way too unfriendly to be looking for Shizuma and have good intentions was looking for him. As if his continuous thoughts of the man manifested him into real life, Shizuma immediately who that blonde man was and peeked out the window, Minato smugly waving the student ID he lost. Shizuma and Minato settled in the university cafeteria, with an uncomfortable silence blanketing the two men. However, Minato's thoughts were too focused on how he could enact his revenge. He acknowledged that a sober Shizuma would be definitely harder to seduce, and the way their morning ended didn't leave him with good options to start his seduction plan. Before he could continue musing, Shizuma asked about his condition. Suddenly, Shizuma looked out from the cafeteria with a surprised look on his face. Minato followed his line of sight and recognized that he was looking at a girl flirting with another man just outside the cafeteria. Minato correctly guessed that the girl in question was Yuka, Shizuma's cheating ex-girlfriend, and he remarked that Shizuma should hate her now. But he was taken aback when Shizuma said that after seeing her happy, he doesn't particularly hate her now. If that capacity for forgiveness isn't enough to identify Shizuma as a green flag, then I don't know what will. Two of Shizuma's friends, Chikagawa and Tatsumi, 
whom Minato identified as the people who brought Shizuma to the nightclub, came over to their table and welcomed themselves together with them. The light-haired Shikigawa saw Yuka from where they were and then started to remark about how Yuka was a horrible woman for two-timing Shizuma. Minato knew that Shizuma was still recovering from the breakup and his friend badmouthing her wasn't doing any help, so he disrupted the insensitive male by dropping a few cigarette ashes onto Chikagawa's hand. While both of them bickered, Tatsumi, smartly wearing a pair of glasses, noted that Shizuma should be careful about who he hangs out with. Rumors might start circulating about Shizuma sleeping with a man after a breakup. He then warned Minato to stop harassing Minato and stop his advances toward Shizuma. It's impressive how shameless the people in this manga are from blatant cheating to insulting people right at their faces. Suddenly, Shizuma disrupted Tatsumi, banging a glass of water on the table and noting that he doesn't want to hang around people who can't show basic respect toward another person. He then pulled Minato out of the cafeteria. Minato was shocked about Shizuma coming to his defense, asking if it was okay that Shizuma left his friends like that. Shizuma noted that he did it so that they would think about what they said and apologized for what his friend said. Minato noted that he's used to it but that it was also refreshing to have someone stand up for him. All of a sudden, it rained and Minato couldn't leave because he left on his bike. Shizuma offered to give him a ride home. Another point for the green flag Shizuma agenda. On the way, Shizuma apologized for his words on the morning prior, frustrating Minato who can't stay mad at him now. Shizuma also wanted to clarify what Minato meant when he said that he got him in the mood. Minato gave a vague answer and taunted Shizuma, asking him what he would do if something did happen between them. To Minato's surprise, Shizuma claimed that he would take responsibility, which made Minato laugh out in disbelief. Continuing on Shizuma's line, Minato asked how he would take responsibility, given that he's a straight man. While Shizuma was thinking for his answer, Minato already had an idea, unbuckling the seatbelt and lunging towards the driver's seat, telling the driver to pull the car over. While Minato was busying himself with his own plans around Shizuma, Shizuma wondered why Minato was doing all this. In Minato's head, he recalled the true reason, to seduce him and break his heart after making him fall for him. However, Minato simply said in reality that this was all just to help poor Shizuma move on from Yuka. Shizuma didn't have to think of anything, he just needed to surrender himself to Minato for that moment. At home, Shohei, Shizuma's younger brother, noticed his brother in a daze while lying on the couch. The younger sibling asked why Shizuma was spacing out and Shizuma asked his brother what he would do if he ever fell in love with a man. Unknown to Shizuma, his brother was already in a romantic relationship with another man. Shohei gave an encouraging answer to just go for it, as long as the person was awesome. Musing on his brother's words, Shizuma recalled what happened after their tryst inside the car. Before Minato left, he left a kiss on Shizuma's cheek and his number on Shizuma's phone. Minato noted that Shizuma can call him whenever he feels lonely. He would be expecting a call given that he should be lonely nowadays. As Minato walked away, Shizuma felt an odd feeling of missing him, something he had not felt about another man. He was also trying to figure out the perplexing actions of the blonde. He was upset the morning before then coquettish the next afternoon. However, Minato's words, trust me, echoed on his mind above all these other thoughts. While still in a trance as their house pets lovingly cuddled with him on the couch, Shohei broke him out of his reverie to announce that a woman had come to visit him. Yuka came over, saying that she had something to say to Shizuma. Their relationship was over, thanks to her cheating face, so there should have been nothing she would possibly want to do to her for Shizuma. Apparently, she came to return the annual tickets that Shizuma prepared for Yuka's birthday. Since Yuka had planned to spend her birthday with her new boyfriend, she had no use for them. After shamelessly returning the tickets, Shizuma was left distraught as Yuka left immediately. It's even more impressive how Shizuma wouldn't even feel repulsed at the sight of a cheating ex-girlfriend. But I guess that's another point for our green flag Shizuma agenda. Feeling down, Shizuma thought of how to use the tickets. He offered it to Shohei, but he rejected the tickets since it seemed like bad luck to use them. Shohei suggested to invite Shizuma's friends instead. But Shizuma just dissed his friends a while back, so it didn't seem like the best time to call them for a trip. That's when the thought of inviting Minato came to Shizuma's mind. Meanwhile, Minato was staring down at his phone in a nightclub. His friends wondered what he was waiting for. And then Minato absent-mindedly noted that he had a bet going with the ladies at the bar, right as his friends tried to invite him for the night. Minato got a call so he hurried out of the club to answer it. Shizuma asked Minato if his weekends were free, saying that he had overnight reservations for Yuka's birthday that might be left unused. Not wanting to go alone, Shizuma thought of inviting Minato with him. Minato teased that if he asked sweetly, he might consider adding it to his schedule. Shizuma gave in. Asking Minato if he'd like to go out with him. Satisfied, Minato agreed. With sparkles and bright smiles all over the place, Minato was drained of his sanity just in the midst of an amusement park. A place full of dreams, hope, and love was a special kind of hell for Minato. 
A concerned Shizuma brought him a drink, asking him if he didn't like amusement parks. Minato glanced over a seemingly happy family as he muttered his answer. This was indeed his first time in an amusement park. Shizuma then took the initiative to ask Minato what he'd like to try first. The two men started with a ride to a haunted house. Minato wasn't particularly impressed with the ride, although he thought that this must have been a memorable experience for Shizuma when he was here with Yuka. Minato thought right, as he looked to his companion and saw him reliving memories of him with his ex-girlfriend during the ride. A bit upset with having a distracted date, Minato leaned over to peck Shizuma on the lips. Surprised, Shizuma asked what prompted Minato to do that. Then Minato warned that Shizuma shouldn't be too preoccupied with something else when they are together. Minato then prodded to the details of their breakup. Shizuma said that Yuka often messaged him, and then the text suddenly slowed down. When he came over to check up on her, he was instead greeted by a man he didn't know, and he eventually found out that this man was living with her. Yuka explained that she didn't dislike Shizuma, but rather she simply found someone she loved more. She then broke up with him right then and there. I don't know who the man Yuka cheated with, or what he looks like, but she's gotta have the worst taste in men if she had to let go of a man as fine as Shizuma. After that brief retelling, Shizuma noted that he must have looked pathetic. Minato disagreed, saying that being able to forgive her despite what she did made Shizuma very attractive. He then expressed his disgust at the concept of commitment like having a lover. He mused that trusting people can easily lead to hurt. Before Shizuma could think about what Minato meant by that, the ride suddenly went faster as approached its climactic section. Minato didn't expect to enjoy that ride so much. Shizuma noticed that it was really Minato's first time at the amusement park, and he enjoyed seeing Minato act like a cute, excited child. He then invited Minato to check out the rest of the rides. As night came, both of them checked into a hotel. With Minato lazing on the bed as he checked out the map of the amusement park, Shizuma nagged Minato to dry his hair, but Minato playfully asked him to do it for him. Shizuma then positioned himself naturally on the bed to dry the blonde's locks, asking if he enjoyed the first day. Minato basked in Shizuma's pampering as he mused about the amusement being okay and that they weren't able to see all the rides. Shizuma suggested that they could start at the other end so that they could cover all rides. Then he finished drying Minato's hair. As Shizuma softly ruffled Minato's hair, Minato sweetly nuzzled against Shizuma's touch, which reminded Shizuma of his pets back at home. Minato suddenly mused out loud that his parents died when he was very young, so they never really got to enjoy a family vacation or any of the sort. Watching other kids enjoy these kinds of things with their families, while he was unable to, made him resentful about these things. However, he enjoyed his time with Shizuma. I mean, any time together with Shizuma is surely more enjoyable than any time without him. But I get what he meant. Surprised at the vulnerability that the other man was showing him now, he realized that he found Minato cute when he smiled and affectionately looked at him. Having seen the usually unsavory man in quite an unguarded and peaceful state, Shizuma couldn't seem to pull his attention away from this attractive man in front of him. Minato also noted that he had never been on a date, so this was another first for him. Shizuma asked if he had ever had a lover, to which Minato noted that he never needed one. He continued, saying that it only becomes painful when the one you love turns on you and that your parents aren't even guaranteed to love you, and that extends to other people. Minato finally noted that other people terrify him and that he could never trust anyone else. Shizuma blurted out, asking if he was one of those other people. Minato was bewildered by the question until Shizuma cut himself off and left to sleep on the couch. Minato grabbed him by the arm, noting that they shouldn't waste a perfectly fine bed by sleeping separately. Minato seduced Shizuma again, saying that they should pick up from their first morning together. Minato promised that Shizuma could get rough and he shouldn't worry about any annoying commitments. Disappointed and sad about the proposed no-strings-attached relationship, Shizuma took him up on the offer, kissing Minato and confirming if he could truly do whatever he wanted. If my man Shizuma isn't getting his feelings across through vague actions, then he had better resort to talking in Minato's language. Thankfully, we don't have to wait for that. The morning sun shone on the hotel room that both men stayed in, and Minato was smoking on a chair. In a daze, Minato carelessly dropped a cigarette butt on his hand, so he proceeded to the bathroom to wash it off. As he glanced at the mirror, he also found the numerous red marks that Shizuma left on his body. On the night before, Minato realized that Shizuma was pissed when he said he'd do whatever he wanted. However, Shizuma clarified that he wasn't doing this as if treating Minato as a one-night stand. Shizuma wanted to spend the night as if they were two people who truly cared for each other. Minato felt that Shizuma was getting a bit too serious about their arrangement for his liking. But Shizuma remarked that Minato tends to not notice the things he misses until he's told about them straight to his face. Minato had mixed feelings the next morning. This was all supposed to be part of his ploy to break his heart for revenge. 
Why was he getting swept off his feet by a few words, trying to rationalize and deny his feelings by passing them off as lustful thoughts during an intimate night? Minato got out of the bathroom to find Shizuma not in bed. Shizuma greeted him with the bright morning sun handsomely caressing his form at the veranda. The scene was breathtaking. And it didn't just take Minato's breath away but also his determination for revenge. At that moment, Minato couldn't deny it anymore. He was in love with Shizuma, and it was for real. Minato teasingly punched Shizuma, trying to release the frustration of having lost against Shizuma's charms and noting to the other man that he wasn't fine at all. However, Shizuma was rather pleased that Minato was acting normally. He was half expecting the blonde to leave after his sudden confession the night before. Minato then noted that he was not the kind person that Shizuma might think he was. However, Shizuma noted that his kindness in helping him get over his heartbreak was more than enough, even if Shizuma forgot what happened between them on their first meeting. Minato mused that his intentions in doing so weren't exactly noble, but Shizuma began to list out things that he found adorable about Minato. Shizuma emphasized that he could see so many good points that Minato had, the constant reminders of Minato's kindness so that Minato would see how Shizuma sees him, another point for green flag Shizuma. You know what, at this point, 100 points for him. Minato was left so puzzled by Shizuma's unconditional trust in him that he had no choice but to recognize Shizuma and his feelings for him. To hell with his revenge, he thought as Minato hugged Shizuma. He didn't want to hurt or leave a man as sweet and affectionate as Shizuma. As he was about to say something, numerous pings from Minato's phone disturbed their lovely morning, all coming from the ladies in the gay bar, asking Minato to buy them treats from the park. Minato and Shizuma went to the gift shop and Minato begrudgingly bought what was asked by the ladies. While at the shop, Minato caught a glimpse of a photo. Shizuma remarked that the photo looked beautiful, while Minato noted that the photo seemed to come from his childhood place. Minato quickly reminisced about his childhood home, although he barely remembered anything from that place. He didn't want to, anyway. Shizuma invited him to visit it when they could, but Minato mused that he couldn't. Minato wanted to be dropped off at the bar to give the gifts he bought to the ladies at the bar. Before leaving the car, Shizuma grabbed Minato and kissed him on the lips. That earned him a pinch on the face. Shizuma noticed that Minato left his scarf in the car, but Minato was already out of earshot when he called him out. Shizuma proceeded to follow him toward the bar. A few pages later, we would realize this is the beginning of the tension. As he went inside the building, Shizuma met the proprietress, whom he failed to recognize. The proprietress then asked if he was already fine after getting his heart broken, to which Shizuma answered that it was thanks to Minato that he was able to move on. The proprietress told him the way to the bar until she realized that Minato was likely to be with the ladies he made the bet with. Sure enough, Shizuma was at the door of the bar, hearing Minato and the ladies talking about their date out loud. As Shizuma was about to reach out to the handle, they started to talk about the bet. Minato exclaimed that he won the bet and that his charm still worked against a straight man. While the ladies did say that revenge was not exactly good, Minato remarked that he didn't exactly like Shizuma that way. As if on cue, Shizuma went inside and delivered the scarf, then left right away. Stunned, Minato realized what happened and tried to catch up to Shizuma. However, when Shizuma looked back, he saw a forlorn look on his face. Oh, that hurt look on Shizuma just tugs our hearts a bit too hard. With such a pitiful expression, Shizuma asked if everything was a lie. However, Minato couldn't muster to speak anything at all. As Shizuma turned his back on Minato, Minato was reminded of what Shizuma said the morning after they first met. He realized that this was what he meant about he'd lose the people he could have had. At the university, Shizuma emanated a dark aura as he busied himself with some paperwork. He even failed to recognize his professor calling him out. Apparently, he's been like that for a whole week, wanting to keep himself distracted. Yuka suddenly burst into the room, wanting to be consoled by Shizuma after getting ignored by her boyfriend. I'm still flabbergasted at the raw audacity of this woman and how everyone just doesn't mind her doing this. Reaching out to the man you just cheated on as if you were the best of buddhas has to be a red flag. Shizuma dismissed her, which surprised Chikagawa, as he wondered why his dear friend Shizuma was at the dumps. Shizuma's phone rang and Minato's name showed up on the screen. Shizuma left the room to answer the call. On the other side of the call, Minato was waiting outside the university near his bike. He remarked that Shizuma answered coldly when he was so sweet before. As Minato was about to apologize, Shizuma cut him off, saying that hearing his voice only hurt him. Shizuma was already miserable about everything. This call was not doing him any favor at all. Minato should have had his fun already, Shizuma noted. Even though Minato said he'd never do it again, Shizuma couldn't trust him anymore. Oh, our poor, poor green flag man. Not even his green flags can unbreak the broken trust. Yuka suddenly grabbed Shizuma's phone and then told Minato to stop calling him. The rain poured as the call dropped. Minato was left regretting his own actions under the rain. The moment he found something he wanted to cherish, he simply ruined it with his own hands. Minato was left wondering what he could say that wouldn't hurt Shizuma. 
while Tatsumi saw his pitiful figure from one of the windows in the university. After dropping the call, Yuka then blocked Minato's number on Shizuma's phone. Although he was initially upset about it, he realized that it might be for the best. Tatsumi joined the group, asking if the reason Shizuma had been out of sorts lately was the man they met at the bar. Tatsumi reiterated what he said before, that nothing good could ever come out of associating with them. After a short silence, Shizuma remarked that Tatsumi was right. If lies and betrayal were all that we'd get from trusting someone, then it'd be better not to trust anyone at all. It's ironic to hear that when Yuka, the first one who betrayed him and who was also there in the group, felt no remorse at all and still shamelessly talks to Shizuma. On the lonely way home, Shizuma thought about how he truly loved Minato and spending time with him. He wondered why he fell for people who would betray him, and why he couldn't learn the lesson right away. At this point, he was tired of thinking about it. Oh, my poor, poor green flag boy getting hurt. He doesn't deserve any of this. As he reached home, he was cleaning up the paws of their dog, Gomez. But he seemed to be too preoccupied with his own thoughts that Shohei had to call him out because the dog badly wanted to come inside the house already. Shohei tried to comfort his brother, but he simply got dismissed. Meanwhile, Itsuki, Shohei's lover, messaged him and said that their date might be delayed. Apparently, Minato is Itsuki's brother, and he wanted to take care of him. Shohei remarked that both their brothers were not feeling well, without even knowing that they were each other's reasons for feeling that way. Shizuma was received by his messy room, thanks to their two playful pets who had too much fun with his wardrobe. His pets were scrambling for something, and Shizuma realized that they had Minato's choker. The cute things wanted to play with it, but Shizuma only seemed to recall that whatever he did on their first night probably made Minato so upset he had to take revenge for it. Before he went on to think back on that day, he banished the thought, persistent on forgetting everything. On the other hand, Minato's memories of his mother were flooding his dreams. He recalled his beautiful mother saying that he was beginning to look more like her and that she wanted his father to see how she raised her son well. His memories shifted to the moment their driver gave him a notebook, leaving him with a reminder not to tell his mother. This, right here, can be traumatizing all by itself, and Itsuki had to be old enough to understand the tryst, while Minato spared himself the trauma by being too young. Well, he will have a trauma of his own, unfortunately. As he saw himself being cornered by his mother screaming that it was his fault, the faint memories of the news about his father dying to the driver he cheated on were quickly replaced by his brother comforting him. However, his mother's words began to ring loudly in his head, saying that he was starting to look more like her, and Minato associated these same words with a fateful event about his mother. Minato broke out in a cold sweat after waking up from that nightmare. Itsuki was beside him, asking him if he had the same dream again. Minato was sorry about calling his brother during his day off but joked that he should get sick more often if it meant having his brother around more often. Itsuki brought rice porridge from their grandmother, which Minato initially tried to deny eating but eventually gave in. Itsuki found the map of the amusement park that Minato kept from his trip with Shizuma. Minato noted that he enjoyed the trip, although he didn't want to go back anymore. Itsuki then asked if he could keep the map instead, since Shohei had wanted to go to the amusement park, too. However, Minato yanked it away from his brother, saying that he would grab Itsuki a new copy if he wanted one. The map simply held too many sweet memories that he can't let go of. At that point, Itsuki realized that his cute little brother was in love. Minato tried to deny it, but he couldn't lie to his brother after all. However, Itsuki also realized that he might be in dire straits regarding the person he loves. Minato confessed that they were over because Minato hurt him. Minato then reiterated his principles. That trusting others can only mean a world of hurt for both parties. Itsuki tried to remind him that he wasn't anything like their mother, and not everyone is like her. Minato acknowledged that fact, but Minato also acknowledged his insecurities. That Minato is afraid to hurt that person so badly that he would drive them to their deaths. After reaffirming for himself that he would stick to the status quo for now, he wanted to take a rest. Before surrendering to a sweet sleep, Minato mused that he was exactly like his mother, both in looks and on the inside, too. However, Itsuki reminded him again that he was nothing like her. Itsuki is such a sweet brother, and we hope that his sincerity reaches Minato. Shizuma visited the bar and learned from the proprietress that Minato was sick, noting that a certain someone put him in a gloomy mood. The proprietress wasn't going to let Shizuma slide if he was looking for him only to chew him out. However, Shizuma simply wanted to know if what he did the first time they met was so bad he had to resort to revenge, since in that case, he wouldn't have to blame Minato for it. She remarked that in any other case, Minato would literally kick his balls. However, after Shizuma consoled him despite being drunk, Minato instead intently listened to his rambling, which was very unlike him. Although she didn't exactly know what happened between them later on that night, she knew that Shizuma forgetting about everything that night upset him very much. She also berated her ladies for making that bet with Minato. 
At that point, the ladies went forward to apologize to Shizuma, saying that Minato wasn't inherently bad. The proprietress pointed out that after all the days they had been together, he should have realized that not all of it was a lie. Shizuma then thought back to their memories from the past few days. Although Minato was mostly unreadable, he often wore his heart on his sleeve, exposing both his innocence and insecurity, albeit in a subtle manner. Shizuma suddenly remembered their morning after his confession, when Minato apologized for something. He realized that Minato must have been wanting to tell him the truth all this time, and he simply failed to listen to him. After snapping back to reality, Shizuma asked the proprietress for Minato's address. Go get your man, Shizuma. As he headed to Minato's flat, he realized that he shouldn't have ignored Minato's pleas to be heard. Shizuma wanted to apologize, and if Minato would let him, he'd like to embrace him again, promising to never let him go again. However, as he knocked on Minato's door, an unfamiliar man opened the door. Recalling the painful moment when another man opened the door to Yuka's apartment, Shizuma tried to excuse himself, thinking he must have gotten the wrong apartment. However, Itsuki asked Shizuma if he was looking for my Minato, in Itsuki's words, deliberately confusing Shizuma. This has got to be cruel. Seeing the same scene from your ex-girlfriend and your current lover has got to deal a blow to Shizuma. The next day, Minato woke up feeling more refreshed. He glanced at the map of the amusement park and then thought to himself that he had to move on. As he was preparing for the day, he saw his choker at the counter with a note that said, he says get well soon. When Minato realized who he was, he called his brother right away, asking if Shizuma had come by last night. Itsuki noted that Shizuma simply returned his choker and that he hoped that Minato would feel better soon. When Minato asked if Shizuma said anything else, Itsuki instead remarked that despite being brothers, Itsuki and Minato didn't look like they were siblings at all. Itsuki said that Shizuma looked surprised to see Itsuki in Minato's apartment, perhaps having the wrong idea about them. Itsuki slyly noted that it didn't matter if Shizuma had the wrong idea since this was what Minato wanted. Not letting anyone in, just Minato, Itsuki, and their grandmother. Minato's face darkened as he realized the situation. Itsuki is so sly. However, I think Minato has to learn that his principles are wrong, perhaps in the hard way. Grasping the choker that Shizuma returned, Minato was at a loss for words. Technically, what Itsuki did was right on track with Minato's proclaimed principles. Itsuki even noted that Shizuma would get over him once he put distance between them. As if to taunt his brother, Itsuki said that Shizuma would eventually move on and meet someone new, and Shizuma and Minato would become complete strangers once Shizuma has a relationship with his new partner. Itsuki asked his brother if that ending would satisfy him. As Minato was still at a loss for words, Itsuki emphasized that living alone is absurd. Although the trauma of their past might haunt them and terrify them from making connections with other people, once they get over that first hurdle, everything beyond that becomes smooth sailing. Itsuki shared that being with someone could be comforting and pleasant, as he glanced to his lover, Shohei. Read the first series, XXX Allergy, to learn more about them, too. Minato slumped his back against a wall, saying that he couldn't reach out to Shizuma anymore if he didn't trust him. However, Itsuki noticed that Shizuma wasn't exactly comfortable with the idea of having another man in Minato's apartment, implying that Minato still had a chance. As if to give him a last push, Itsuki noted it had been a while since Minato acted this reluctant. His usual aggressive confidence was nowhere to be seen right now, and he looked lame without it. Taking that as some form of taunting, Minato seemed to be up to do something about it. Itsuki once again reassured him that everything would be fine, and even if it didn't, he would be there to console him about it. As Itsuki dropped the call, Shohei went to him and asked if the Shizuma they had been talking about was who he thought it would be. This would have been comedic in a better timing, but we'll have to deal with the drama first. Shizuma, on the other hand, disembarked from a train and was greeted by a spectacular view of the sea. Minato was trying to reach Shizuma's phone but to no avail. He rushed to the university, hoping to see even his shadow. He then realized that he knew almost nothing about Shizuma as he slumped helplessly on a railing. Tatsumi and Chikagawa suddenly came across and found him. When Minato realized they were Shizuma's friends, he asked them if they knew where Shizuma was. Tatsumi retorted that he had no reason to tell Minato where Shizuma was, even if he knew. Even though Tatsumi had to say it in a certain way, I can see where he is coming from. I also don't want to see our friends hurt. As Tatsumi shooed Minato away, Minato grabbed Tatsumi, pleading for help. Shikagawa intervened, saying that they also didn't have any idea where he went. They had been worrying about Shizuma as of late since he was in a worse state than when Yuka broke up with him. The three became worried, as the professor's words about Shizuma probably doing something drastic rang in their thoughts. 
Yuka suddenly joined in their conversation, saying that she could help find Shizuma. Surprised at her offer, the four of them went inside their laboratory, with Yuka on her laptop, Tatsumi calling the Ikishima residents, and Chikagawa asking around their friends. As Minato remarked about Shizuma having decent friends, Chikagawa gave him a lollipop and reassured him that they would find Shizuma. Minato also took this chance to apologize to Chikagawa about dropping some cigarette ashes on his hands back in Chapter 1. In the same vein, Tatsumi also clumsily apologized to Minato for his words back then by suddenly reciting some facts about homosexuality's prevalence in the animal kingdom. Tatsumi explained that Shizuma had been a magnet for people with bad intentions and he mistook Minato to be part of that sort. Minato accepted his apology, noting that he should be nicer the next time around. Suddenly, Yuka exclaimed that she had access to Shizuma's current photo album on his phone. When Tatsumi asked her how she got remote access to the photos, she explained that she fiddled with his phone back when they first started dating so that she could keep track of what Shizuma did when they weren't together. If this is not yet the pinnacle of Yuka's red flag agenda, I don't know what is. That earned her a few suspicious looks from the rest of the group, but everyone focused on the latest images that Shizuma took. Minato recognized an image out of the bunch and realized where he had been. He wondered why Shizuma would be there, out of all the places he could be. Struggling to get a good photo of a random cat, Shizuma thought that the town was beautiful. We are then brought back to the night he went to Minato's apartment. Shizuma was actually able to correctly guess that Itsuki was Minato's brother, which made Itsuki happy, given that most people wouldn't be able to. When Shizuma learned from Itsuki that Minato was resting, he got flustered from rushing to his place without considering that he was sick. Itsuki then asked Shizuma if he was the one who took Minato to the amusement park. When Shizuma said yes, Itsuki thanked him for it, saying that Minato was a sheltered child and that he should try to get out and learn more about the world. After that, Shizuma asked Itsuki where they grew up when they were children. He wanted to take pictures of that town since Minato looked like he dearly missed the place. Touched by the gesture, Itsuki handed him a key to the mansion, presumably the one they stayed on, and told him to ask about the Kirigeas so that he could have an easier way of navigating the town. At the town, Shizuma was leisurely taking pictures around when he was approached by a random dog. The dog's owner came over with two other dogs, and Shizuma took the chance to ask about the Kirigeas with two sons. The old woman then retold the history of that family. The family was quite an influential household in the town. However, the family was never seen together, with the father constantly working and the mother mostly staying inside their house. Suddenly, news of the father leaving the household shook the entire town and drove the mother mad that she hung herself in the middle of town. Apparently done out of spite, the husband's family was occupied with silencing the scandal until the husband's body was found not long later. He was killed by the person he ran away with, which everyone presumed was his employee or lover. The old woman ended her tragic retelling by pointing out how Shizuma could reach the Kirigeya family house. She also noted that both sons of the family had moved out of the town after the prior events. After hearing this heavy, heart-trenching story, I can almost excuse Minato's red flag behaviors. Truly, only a green flag like Shizuma is perfect for him. Minato, on the other hand, was cursing under his breath as he wondered why Shizuma would even come to his childhood town. As he sped through the streets of the town on his motorbike, he started to recall the memories surrounding the scandal of his parents' deaths. Before his painful memories started gripping his mind, he strengthened his resolve by reminding himself how much he missed Shizuma. As if on cue, Minato found Shizuma casually strolling by the beach. He stopped his bike and lunged his entire being at Shizuma, surprising the latter. As Shizuma tried to check up on Minato's physical condition, Minato started to berate Shizuma about him not answering his phone or even coming to the town. Shizuma was worried that Minato had a hard time bringing himself back to this town. However, Minato retorted that he had to if he had to find Shizuma. When Shizuma saw Minato's sincere yet longing face, he hugged him tight, apologizing for not listening to his side of the story. Minato immediately pulled him into a passionate kiss, saying that he should stop apologizing and just hold him instead. Shizuma asked how Minato was able to find him there. Minato threw a ridiculously decorated phone to Shizuma as he recalled the events at the university. Apparently, the phone was from Yuka, who gave it to him so that Minato could track Shizuma's location. Before Minato left, Yuka remarked that she acknowledged her mistakes and was grateful that Shizuma still had the heart to forgive her. She wanted to be able to help Minato bring Shizuma back. Yeah, this isn't changing my opinion of you, Yuka, but nice try, anyway. Minato then berated her about her incessant calls to Shizuma. Shizuma apparently blocked all incoming calls since they drained his battery fast. The sky suddenly went dark, with the rain looming over them, just as Tatsumi remarked. As the rain poured down on them, Minato wondered where they would stay in the meantime. Shizuma suggested a place they could stay. Minato opened the door to their family mansion using the key that Shizuma got from Itsuki. Shizuma was concerned about Minato, asking if he was fine entering such a place with bitter memories for him. 
Minato remarked that there was no point backing out since he already invited himself in and since they also need a place to stay, anyway. Minato checked up on the state of the mansion, musing that the house was never sold. For an old mansion, the place still had a lot of furniture and items inside it, making for a creepy atmosphere. However, Minato chanced upon the window where he remembered curling himself as a small boy when his mother was berating him. I am indeed impressed at how well Minato has held up after coming back to the very place that traumatized him. I guess being around Shizuma does that to you. Shizuma snapped him out, asking him why he was zoning out. Minato played a small prank about seeing things in an abandoned house. He then led Shizuma into the safest place in the house, which happened to be the attic that Itsuki mentioned before. Minato asked Shizuma to find some blankets on a nearby wardrobe then led him to a small fort in the midst of the attic. Minato lit a few candles and remarked that this was where he and Itsuki spent the most time in the house. As Minato lit a cigarette, Shizuma asked about what happened in their past. Both men settled down in the fort and Minato asked him to bear with him if the story gets too depressing. Back when Minato was a grade schooler, Minato's mother was considered the queen of the household who cared for no one else but his father. Minato once presented an award he got from a photography contest he won. Although his mother dismissed him altogether from the excitement of his father finally coming home, his mother got a call from his father and then her expression darkened as the conversation went on. When the call was finished, both Minato and Itsuki were told to return to their rooms as they left their mother's room. Itsuki gave him his camera as a reward for winning the contest. Minato remarked that Itsuki was his anchor that kept him from straying into a bad person. Truly, they are brothers through and through, despite not sharing similar features. One day, as both brothers played outside, they noticed their father's work car parked on an open field. Itsuki's face darkened when he saw what was happening inside the car. Minato took a peek and saw his father in an unsightly position with his chauffeur. Itsuki covered his brother's eyes and led him back home. This, right here, would have scarred me for life. Itsuki is a strong brother for protecting Minato all this time. Later on, the chauffeur approached Itsuki while he was taking pictures of some cats. The chauffeur asked the young Minato to give an old, dusty notebook to his father. After his father got the notebook, his father abandoned his family to elope with the chauffeur. Thinking back on it, the notebook must have been a love letter of sorts but Minato's younger self wouldn't have known any better. Minato's mother was left immensely distraught reading the letter his father left to her. In her despair, Minato's mother shifted the blame to young Minato, saying that if he hadn't given that book to him, he would have stayed with her. His mother lifted a flower vase while menacingly stepping toward a fearful Minato. Drunk with madness, his mother threw the vase down in Minato's direction. Minato would have been greatly injured, if not for Itsuki blocking the vase and having him injured instead. Itsuki tried to calm his mother down, and their maids also helped subdue their mother, who was obviously out of her mind. As her mother was being led away from the brothers, she swore to embarrass her sons and her husband to the point that they couldn't stay in the town anymore. I can only imagine the horrifying image of their mother cursing them as she was led away, and that moment seared into the minds of the young boys. Poor siblings, indeed. Her public death and the subsequent murder of their father disillusioned Minato about the consequences of love. If love was only going to lead to blind obsession and eventual betrayal, then he wasn't going to become anything like his parents. Minato winded down his story by saying that they were staying with their grandmother after the debacle, renaming themselves Mido and left the town. Minato wanted to be stronger to be able to protect his brother just like how his brother protected him back when he was young. However, he felt alone when his brother found a partner. Feeling that he was going to be alone for real, he then got harassed by a certain drunk. Minato then started to retell the events of their first night. After getting chewed out and complaining about his brother, Shizuma ruffled Minato's hair at the bar, comforting him out of nowhere. The proprietress then shared that Shizuma was cheated on by his girlfriend. Thinking that his situation was another point to note that his principles of staying alone were correct, Minato suggested that Shizuma should get his revenge against his girlfriend. However, Shizuma instead noted that hurting her back is meaningless, and it's better for her to be happy with her new boyfriend instead. Shizuma, your capacity for forgiveness is unrivaled. I declare you the king of all green flags, and none can contest. At that point, Minato realized that not everyone was like his parents and that some people are capable of forgiving others instead of wishing for vengeance. Minato remarked that people like Shizuma were more worthy of being happy, and that made Shizuma glad. Shizuma kept on ruffling Minato's hair as if to comfort him. However, when Shizuma forgot all about him the next morning, he felt alone and abandoned. He ended up doing things in the same vein as his mother. Minato confessed that it is his constant fear that he would do the same drastic things as his mother, making everyone else around him as miserable as he would be. As Minato was trying to list out more cons of getting into a relationship with him, he cut himself off once he noticed that Shizuma was grinning the whole time. Shizuma was smiling because he realized that most of Minato's fears revolved around wanting Shizuma to be happy and being afraid of hurting him. 
As their playful banter ended, Shizuma asked Minato if he knew who owned the mansion now. Minato assumed it was someone from his father's side. But Shizuma revealed that Itsuki actually worked hard to buy the house before it was supposed to be demolished. Despite their horrible memories in the house, Itsuki wanted him and Minato to have a house to return to if they ever wished to. Shizuma also showed a video recording of the ladies in the bar with their heads shaved and an apology written on their heads. Shizuma then pointed out that Minato had been solely focusing on the bad points, and that he should just take good things as they present themselves to be. Shizuma reassured Minato that he would never become like his mother. But Minato scoffed at the idea. Shizuma wanted Minato to forget about the past and instead focus on who and what he does now. Shizuma also recognized that he also needed to do the same and he didn't want to hurt Minato again. Shizuma wanted to confirm if Minato wanted to be with him or not. Held back by his fears, Minato wanted to say yes but before he could say anything else, Shizuma pulled him into a tight embrace. Shizuma remarked that how they started and how often they would fight and argue didn't matter now. He wanted to be with him and he didn't want their relationship to end over something that hadn't happened yet. Shizuma wanted Minato to be happy, even if Minato believed he didn't deserve it. Minato tried to peel himself out of Shizuma's arms but Shizuma wouldn't let him, pleading him to believe in them. Minato tried to playfully recount several possible situations as if to discourage Shizuma. However, Shizuma had the perfect answer to each of them. Finally, Minato gave in. Shizuma expected a cuter response from Minato. Given that he even lunged at him at the beach, he then toppled the blonde to the makeshift bed at the fort. Minato then sweetly declared that he would trust Shizuma before passionately kissing his new lover. Yes, they can finally be happy. Afraid of losing his composure over the burning passion of their kiss, Shizuma asked Minato to slow down since he wanted to enjoy their time together. However, Minato wasn't going to go slow now. He wanted Shizuma to completely make him his. Never in Minato's life had he imagined himself in this position. Being too intimately involved with someone, or kissing, touching, and being touched simply gave him a sense of fulfillment. Minato thought he didn't want anything to do with these things until Shizuma came into his life. As they sweetly made love in the fort, Shizuma exclaimed that he absolutely loved being with Minato like they are right now, while Minato abashedly remarked that he wasn't used to this. He regretted not remembering what happened on their first night, since he would have imagined that Minato would have been as adorable as he was in that moment. However, Minato revealed that nothing actually happened that night since Shizuma ended up falling asleep before they could go any further. Minato noted that this would be their real first night. All throughout their ardent lovemaking, Shizuma constantly wanted to make sure that Minato wasn't hurt. When Minato remarked that he hadn't felt this fulfilled with anyone else, Shizuma took that as a sign to shower Minato with even more love. Minato suddenly felt shy with all the attention that Shizuma was giving him. But Shizuma wanted to sear the memory of their love in his mind so he would never forget it. Every chapter, I am constantly reminded that Shizuma is the greenest flag and I would probably have a hard time finding an equivalent in real life. Shizuma said that he loves Minato, to which Minato finally replied the same. As they kissed again, Minato noted that he now gives Shizuma his everything, and he should take care of it. As the morning came, both men went out to enjoy the sunrise by the beach. Shizuma remarked that the view indeed matched the image they saw at the amusement park, and Minato didn't expect to share this view with Shizuma. Shizuma tried to take a picture of Minato so that he could show Minato's fulfilled face to Itsuki, but he ended up taking it badly. As Shizuma continuously tried to take pictures of the sunrise, Minato's phone rang and revealed that Itsuki was calling him. When Minato answered, he was displeased to see Shohei's face pop on the screen. Itsuki then greeted Minato and asked if he was with Shizuma. He then pointed out that he should try to compare Shohei and Shizuma's faces. When Minato found an uncanny resemblance, he asked for Shizuma's last name, which is Ikashima. Minato recognized it as Shohei's last name and connected the dots. Shizuma also saw Shohei in Minato's call, surprised to see his younger brother with Itsuki. Itsuki was quite pleased with the astronomical coincidence. Shohei and Minato were in denial and disbelief, while Shizuma had no clue whatsoever. Shohei then told his brother to come back so that he could explain what was happening, but Shizuma still had no clue. Exasperated, Minato noted that his family suddenly became bigger. Opening a piece of bread, Shizuma remarked that it wasn't particularly a bad thing. As they both took a bite out of the bread, Minato thought that despite not being over his past, he would be just fine focusing on his happiness with Shizuma right now. In a separate scene, the Ikashima brothers were thinking about how to explain this predicament to their mother, while Itsuki was concerned whether Minato and Shizuma did something on their sacred fort. The following two chapters are a side arc called Play More, which occurs after the end of the main story and presents a separate story about the pair. The sound of the morning news mixed up with the passionate noises of Shizuma and Minato expressing their love to each other early in the morning. As each of them got their fill of their lover, Shizuma asked if he really needed to be with him for today. Minato cutely pouted and reminded him of the promise he made before. 
Later on, the Ikashima brothers and the Maido brothers came to the amusement park, with Minato and Shohei competing for who gets to be with Itsuki while Shizuma simply hung around behind them. Apparently, Minato invited his brother and Shohei to come with them to the amusement park, with Minato's sinister plan to ruin Shohei's dates with Itsuki. Although Minato was ignoring him after their sweet morning together, he was perfectly content with simply seeing Minato smile. Shohei told his brother to keep his lover in reins, but Shizuma retorted that they enjoyed their morning together. Shohei barfed at the thought. Suddenly, Mr. Tiny, a rabbit mascot they met during their first visit, loomed over Minato from behind, scaring the blonde. He instinctively jumped into Shizuma's embrace as the mascot simply tried to give Minato a lolly. Itsuki and Shohei were pleased to see Minato being a bit more vulnerable than usual, although Minato immediately swatted Shizuma's arms around him, attempting to jump at another chance to ruin Shohei and Itsuki. However, the people lining up for the ride began to increase, and eventually Shizuma and Minato were separated from their brothers. While Minato was upset about getting his plans ruined, two girls were whispering to each other. Shizuma noticed them intently looking at both of them, and he was right in earshot when he heard them talking about whether they were both dating each other. He looked at both women, grabbed Minato's hand, and waved their finger-locked hands as if to show it off to them. Oh, for a boyfriend like Shizuma to proudly tell the world about his love, tis a luxury that only Minato can enjoy for now. He grinned as both women were embarrassed to have been found out. Minato noted that Shizuma didn't get embarrassed doing such things, and Shizuma remarked that it is better to simply let them know if they didn't know. As their trip continued, the grip they had on their hands simply got tighter. Minato brought gifts for the ladies in the gay bar, meant to be a thank you for the cheering message they sent him before. While the ladies took off to enjoy their souvenirs, the proprietress noticed that Minato was feeling rather down for someone who just came from a day. Minato then began to retell how Shizuma did everything a perfect boyfriend would, bring his bags, shield him from the heat of the sun, memorize all his favorite things, and pay for everything. Shizuma already checked all the items under the perfect boyfriend list and even went ahead and added more. What else do you even need from a boyfriend that Shizuma doesn't have? Minato. Itsuki noted that Shizuma was pretty similar to his Shohei, a sweet man who would treat Minato right. However, Minato distastefully remarked that his actions smacked of ex-girlfriend training, reminding Minato that Shizuma was straight before they were together. Minato would have preferred if Shizuma wouldn't do anything for him except the bag carrying. The proprietress gave her two cents about Shizuma. Shizuma wasn't the type who would be lacking a girlfriend at any point in time. His dependability, sweetness, and kindness are traits that most girls would be looking for in a boyfriend, so girls would definitely flock to him. The proprietress even taunted Minato, saying that he should keep a tight leash on Shizuma before he got snatched right under his nose. Minato was about to rage at the thought until Itsuki snapped him out and asked where Shizuma was. Minato said that he was stuck at the university caring for a pregnant cow. He then checked his phone to see that he missed Shizuma's call. Minato watched a video of the mother cow and her calf as Shizuma opened a bottle of wine for the both of them. Minato shared what they talked about Shizuma being flocked with girls, to which Shizuma snorted and joked that the only females being thrown his way nowadays are female calves. Minato asked how many girlfriends Shizuma had in the past. Shizuma paused for a while, before sneakily saying he only had a few. You've heard what the proprietress said, Shizuma is a man who's bound to be chased by girls, and I totally understand why. Minato noticed the pause and caught that Shizuma basically dodged the question. Minato felt bad about being upset at Shizuma's past relationships but Shizuma went up to him and reassured him that he's only with Minato now. Minato dismissed Shizuma's concerns and instead invited him to stay over. As they shared a passionate kiss, Shizuma's phone rang. Yuka was frantically asking for Shizuma's help as another cow went into labor at the university. Minato immediately got upset as the ex-girlfriend yet again ruined their alone time. Yuka pleaded with Shizuma that he was the only one she could rely on now, and Shizuma noted that he is weak to such comments. Shizuma was about to reject her pleas when Minato urged him to go and help her out. When Shizuma agreed to go, Yuka exclaimed that she was thankful and that she loves him obviously not in a romantic way. Minato flared at the audacity of this two-timing woman and I did, too. Shizuma prepared to leave for the university, apologizing for having their night ruined. As Minato couldn't get rid of the unsettling feeling about Shizuma being weak against Yuka's requests, he went to a nightclub instead. At the nightclub, two of Minato's friends teased him for feeling lonely after Shizuma left. His friends remarked that Minato who was supposed to seduce and dump Shizuma was now the one wrapped in his finger. Minato suddenly got a text saying that he should be able to come back soon. However, Minato was too upset and ignored the text altogether. At that point, his friends planned to play a prank on Minato and Shizuma. As one of them distracted Minato, the other one sneakily took Minato's phone, snapped a deceptive photo of Minato looking like he was kissing another dude, 
and sent it to Shizuma. Shizuma was flabbergasted when he received the message. Minato's friends were curious for someone who was initially promiscuous like Minato to settle down with one lover. Minato revealed that he was upset at himself for getting upset at minor things and mused that dating wasn't all rainbows and sunshine like most people would give it credit for. Minato's light-haired friend suddenly asked if Shizuma was bi-curious, given that he had only dated women in the past. Minato got interested in his friend's ex who was also the same. The light-haired man noted that it wasn't going to be a happy story. He then proceeded to say that his ex left him to marry a woman. Public appearances, expectations, and a desire for children all factored into his decision of simply wanting to be with a woman instead of with a man. These are all valid concerns, but they are not criticisms or judgments of bisexual people. It is simply the consequence of following social norms. They then remarked that bisexual guys have more options, and there would be those who would take the easy way out and end up marrying women instead. They advised Minato to avoid getting too attached to Shizuma unless he's prepared to be hurt in the future. Minato thought that Shizuma wouldn't be like that, yet he wavered. Shizuma was having a hard time navigating through the crowd in the nightclub, although he noted that it was better than being around animals worrying about being kicked. Suddenly, a man grabbed his behind and asked him out, although Shizuma rejected him. Shizuma realized that the nightclub was a club for gays, and he was left wondering why Minato would come to this place. At Minato's table, his friends had been trying to wean him off the drinks, but Minato was already inebriated after getting upset at their talk. The dark-haired friend noted that Minato was like this because of the talk about the light-haired dude's ex, to which the latter apologized. As the light-haired man's words echoed in Minato's mind, his thoughts wandered to the possibility of Shizuma leaving him for another woman. As the light-haired dude approached Minato and invited him out for the night, Shizuma came on cue. Surprised, Minato wondered why Shizuma was there, while his friends ogled at Minato's fabled boyfriend. Shizuma reached out for them to leave, but Minato ignored him and declared that he was going to stay in the club for the night. Minato's friends instead dragged Shizuma to sit between them. Shizuma asked if it was them who sent the image, while Minato was left clueless about the message. All that while, his friends were feeling up Shizuma as they were inviting him for a night with the four of them. Irritated at the unnecessary touching, Minato threw down a knife at the table. I would throw more than just a knife if I see unnecessary hands on my man. Minato told his friends off for feeding his fears of being left by a bisexual man for a woman, then warned them that they would regret it if they touched Shizuma more. Minato then yanked his boyfriend from the clutches of his friends and went out of the nightclub. His friends remarked that Minato was still very much like a child in terms of relationships. As the couple went out of the club, Shizuma grabbed Minato who was a few strides in front of him. Minato berated him for not telling him when he hangs out in these kinds of places. Not getting any response from Minato, Shizuma then recalled Minato's friend's words about betraying and stealing. Minato was hesitant to talk about his fears of Shizuma leaving him for a woman, especially after promising to trust him. Minato dismissed Shizuma's concerns and gave an excuse. Disappointed at Minato's dishonesty, Shizuma remarked that Minato still continued to shut him out as he left to fetch them a taxi. The next morning, Minato went to his brother's shop in a gloomy mood. Shohei remarked that it was fairly early in the relationship for them to be fighting. Minato's grandmother even teased her sulking grandson to get a grip. As Shohei tried to cheer Minato up, the blonde went on to comment that Shohei was pretty strong for believing in Itsuki despite the lies he fed to him, while he was already getting upset imagining things that hadn't happened yet. Shohei stared at the gloomy Minato and then said that he was acting like a girl in love. Minato grabbed Shohei's collar, threatening him for making fun of him, but Shohei clarified that feeling like that is true for everyone and that simply meant that Minato truly cared for Shizuma. Minato then came to the realization that he indeed sounded like a flaky woman who talks about love all day and that Shohei was right, nothing has happened yet. Shohei offered to teach Minato a way to get rid of those worries. On the other hand, Shizuma spent some time in a cafe, reading LGBT books. He recalled the words he heard from Minato and his friends the night before about bisexual men preferring women in the end. Frustrated at the thought that Minato might have been thinking that he would do something like that, Shizuma realized that these issues might be from the discrimination that same-sex couples often experience in public, based on their first-hand experience in the amusement park. People, take notes. This is how you resolve your partner's anxieties and how you fall in love with non-existent 2D men. Shizuma already prepared his resolve for issues like that, and he was frustrated thinking that Minato thought they wouldn't be able to weather such challenges after all that Shizuma had done to win his heart. However, he quelled his frustration as he understood that Minato is generally pessimistic and he simply needed to find a way to reassure Minato, words won't cut it. He went through the topics he read from the books he got, but he realized that none of those would satisfy Minato. As Shizuma continued to read, he found a cute illustration of two old men. He wondered if Minato would ever mellow down as they would grow older. Shizuma then realized what he had to do. 
Suddenly, he got a text from Minato saying that they should meet up at the Ferris wheel near where Shizuma was. He hurried along and went out of the cafe. Meanwhile, one of Minato's friends, the dark-haired dude from the club, was also in the cafe and noticed his friend's boyfriend leaving the cafe. A blanket of silence wrapped over the two men as they rode a cart together. As Shizuma wondered if Minato was still mad at him, Minato apologized first, about the night before and for not talking about stuff that was troubling him with Shizuma. Even as Minato promised to trust Shizuma, he couldn't stop himself from imagining the worst possibilities. Minato suddenly mused about having a cow bite off Shizuma's family jewels so that no woman could take him away from him. However, Minato started to recount the things that he liked about Shizuma as if to remind himself why he committed to this relationship in the first place. Minato then declared his impassioned resolve to never let anyone take Shizuma away from him. Shizuma pointed out that there were people from another cart staring at them. Minato looked at the two girls, then motioned them to keep silent as he pulled Shizuma into a fervent kiss. Minato recalled that he got himself back up from his gloomy mood as Shohei recommended him to simply think about the good things that had happened to them thus far. By thinking that Shizuma did all those good things because Shizuma indeed loved him, the very thought of it would quell any insecurities that Minato might have. Minato remarked that it was a pretty dumb idea to do that, but Shohei retorted that imagining the worst to happen and brooding over it was just as dumb. If both would be dumb, then it would be better to go for the dumb but happy side. Shizuma was glad that Minato finally opened up to him. As they left the amusement park, the couple came across Minato's friends from the nightclub in a car. As Minato bickered with his friends, Shizuma wanted to know who they truly were. Minato wanted to dismiss them as barely acquaintances. However, the other two men had other plans, as the dark-haired man introduced himself as someone who got his cherry popped by Minato. They proceeded to retell tales of Minato's promiscuous days as Shizuma stared at Minato, gauging his reaction. Minato's friends then left Minato and Shizuma with the former male sweating bullets. Shizuma remarked that they were interesting people then pointed out to Minato that he would scold Minato if he ever lied to him again. As they checked in at a hotel, Shizuma tied Minato's hands using Minato's belt. Minato remarked that getting tied up wasn't his kink. That was the point, Shizuma retorted. It was supposed to be a punishment so that Minato would reflect. Minato then confessed that the three of them were friends with benefits for a while back then, and they don't have anything to do with each other anymore, even way before both of them met. Shizuma then mentioned the unfairness of Minato getting upset about Shizuma's exes, but Shizuma couldn't feel the same toward Minato's exes. Minato tried to pry his arms off the belt, but Shizuma threatened that he wouldn't speak to Minato for a week if he did so. Shizuma then clarified that this was not supposed to make Minato feel good. Shizuma wanted Minato to think about what he did. I know this scene is going to be sexy, and Shizuma saying otherwise simply makes it even more so. Shizuma nonchalantly proceeded with his agenda of punishing Minato for lying which was frustrating Minato. Minato then noted that Shizuma also needed to be punished. Shizuma reeked too much of acting like a straight man who dated women before, and he also let other people feel him up too closely. Minato noted that Shizuma had to fix those because now, he is Minato's lover. Touched at the honesty, Shizuma asked Minato how he could help relieve Minato's anxiety. He continually peppered Minato with kisses and compliments, as if to give physical confirmation of his love to his insecure lover. Minato finally pulled his arms out of the belt and apologized for his faults. They finished off the night in each other's embrace. The next morning, Minato was fully satisfied from the night before, noting that making Shizuma mad might be good every now and then. As he fumbled around for his coat, Shizuma's bag fell and all the articles inside it spilled out. Minato then found one of the books that Shizuma was reading the day before. Shizuma explained that he tried to understand Minato's fears by reading about them. Minato asked what Shizuma learned after all his reading as he fixed up Shizuma's bag. Although Shizuma couldn't say anything for sure, he noted that he wanted to grow old with Minato, similar to the two men wearing tacky sweaters in the illustration. Societal expectations didn't bother Shizuma as much, and he definitely wouldn't give Minato up just to meet those. He remarked that he wanted to grow old only with Minato. Minato noted that he didn't want it that way. If Shizuma would ditch the tacky sweaters, Minato could also consider thinking about growing old with him. Touched, Shizuma pulled Minato into a tight hug, happy that Minato thought the same way. Minato then mused that someone like Shizuma, who would get unbearably happy at the thought of growing old with him, would never leave him. Minato remarked that it wouldn't be easy growing old with him. If he caught Shizuma cheating, he might just do unspeakable things to him. To that, Shizuma retorted that he would do the same. Both of them stumbled back to the bed as they made promises to grow old together. 